I want to do a quick review of the four types of solids and the different kinds of intermolecular forces. Now it turns out even though there are four types of solids, we end up with six different categories because there are three categories of molecular solids. Okay, big ideas here is that all solids are actually made up of lattices. Okay, and the lattice like we have at the bottom, some kind of a repeating pattern. And you might know like little lattice work things you might have it at home uh, above your fence and things. Now, the lattice points are what's important for the different kinds of solids. We want to know what are the lattice points and what is it that holds those things together, holds the lattice points to each other. And the last thing, just keep in mind that even things we know of as gases and liquids at room temperature can also be solids. Okay, for example, water, you know, we know that that's a liquid normally under uh, room conditions, but that can be frozen into a solid. Same thing like something like CO2, we know that's a gas, but that can be cooled and cooled and cooled and turns into a solid dry ice. So even things we know of as gases and liquids, we're still going to consider them solids. Now here's the big cover, the big uh, list, and this is going from the highest melting point to the lowest melting point. So that means, you know, these would have the strongest interparticle forces holding them together, and these down here would have the weakest ones. So we start off with the covalent network solids, ionic solids, metallic solids, and then the molecular solids, you know, are our fourth kind of a solid, but when we look at those, you know, molecular solids that are held together with hydrogen bonding, held together with dipole-dipole attractions, and London dispersion forces. So those are our six categories, four kinds of solids. Looking at the first three, these ones are not molecules. Okay, these are all just extended crystals of different kinds of uh, lattice points. And the strongest ones here we know are covalent network solids, and those would be uh, diamond and graphite and silica, SiO2. And each of those are held together with covalent bonds, so each one is a covalent bond connected to another one. So we could sort of call that intermolecular force, but not really. These are just bonds that are holding all the lattice points together. But that's the very, very, very strongest situation. The second one, ionic solids. Ionic solids are held together because we have positive ions attracted to negative ions. And that's pretty strong as well. Not nearly as strong as covalent solids, but it's still pretty strong. If we were going to go for numbers, we would say covalent bonds, about a thousand is the score they get. Ionic solids, somewhere between 30 and 100, okay, which is still pretty strong. Now when we get to metallic solids, okay, metallic solids, remember that uh, metal atoms, we can think of them as positive ions with their little uh, valence, loosely held valence electrons. So a solid a metal is a lattice of positive ions, okay, surrounded by all these free electrons, so a sea of electrons. So the lattice points on ionic compounds are positive and negative ions. The lattice points on metallic compounds are positive ions surrounded by electrons. Now again, these would be a score of somewhere between 30 and 130 um, as far as their strength of these, the bonds holding the uh, lattice points together. Now the other three, a little confusing because they're all molecular solids. So these are all things that would show up as molecules. Now I'm going to start with my middle case, which are dipole-dipole attractions. So these are going to be molecules that are polar. And a polar molecule has a positive end and a negative end. And the positive end of one molecule attracts the negative end of another molecule. So here we're looking for polar molecules. Now, the other part here, these hydrogen bonding, this is a special case of polar molecules. So that's what we would have here. And it turns out that in these molecules, if you see H bonded to F, if you see H bonded to N, or if you see H bonded to O, those bonds are so polar that it makes this dipole-dipole attraction extra strong. So we give it its own name, call it hydrogen bonding, and it's about 10 times stronger than other dipole-dipole attractions. The last case we have over here, which are nonpolar molecules. Now, nonpolar molecules are held together with London dispersion forces. 
and these are situations where these electron clouds can get slightly off-center so that maybe the one end is a little bit negative, one end is a little bit positive and that causes another one to get a little bit negative, a little bit positive. So if you see a nonpolar molecule then that is going to be London dispersion forces. So polar could be hydrogen bonding if it's HF, HN, or HO bonded together. Okay, other polar molecules will fall in the dipole-dipole attractions. And if they're nonpolar molecules, they'll be there in the London dispersions. Now, last thing is I have a little uh, chart. You can stop and see if you can uh, guess which ones, you know, determine which type of forces are holding each of these together. And notice these are going from very weak attractions to very strong attractions. Pause it here, and then I'll show you the answers in a few moments. Here we go to the answers.